leadership for life. She's going to tell us so much that's going to help all of us. I want you to help me to welcome Gina Garner. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. I'm always glad to have you. I'm here and Fearless Heart. And this is really the first Nadia Sahari Show. It's amazing. Thank you. I feel very honored to be here. Oh, you, I'm honored. Well, let's talk about you. Leadership for life. What is that all about? If you um, consider that we are the common denominator that we take into every moment of every day. So it makes sense, doesn't it, to recognize that we are the leaders of our own life. Sorry. Do you want me to do that again while you're there? Yes. Yes. Shall I start again? Yes. Okay. Leadership for life. If you consider that we are the common denominator, we take ourselves into every moment of every day. And so it makes sense for us to be the leaders of our own life. But yes. what a lot of people do is they hand over the thinking, their emotions, their well being to other people. You know, you'll have heard the phrase, he made me so unhappy, or she frustrates me, or I can't do anything because they won't approve. You're then handing over your leadership, your power to other people to decide what sort of life are you going to have? Whereas if you take radical responsibility for your thoughts, emotions, actions, and your language, then you have control over your life not over other people, but over you. And you can decide how you feel, how you're going to be. And so for me, leadership for life is, doesn't matter whether you're talking about personal life, relationships, or your professional life, the place you start is with you. Wow, <laughs> I like that, it's true, it's so true. And really, that's all you can control, is your own little circle, your own self. That's right. And you cannot control anyone else. And your feelings, your emotions, those need to be controlled because those are what get us into trouble. And I learned that the hard way. I just learned that as of uh, about a year ago, maybe eight months ago, I learned that emotions and feelings, if you don't control, they control you and you make mistakes. I think, you know, people talk about positive emotions and negative emotions. For me, emotions are the, the, only, the only positive or negative is the judgment that we put on them. For me, emotions are there to tell us something. And they either tell us that yes, we're living in a situation where we're in line with our core values. When we're feeling happy and, and contented, we and the people around us are actually in tune with those values. Yes. But as soon as you're in a situation where you're out of tune with yourself and not being true to yourself, and a lot of people aren't true to themselves because they're trying to please other people, yes. trying to get other people to like them. Or if you have other people who are around you who have very different values, whether that's your intimate relationship, your friends, family, or your business relationships, then you feel negative emotions or what we call negative but actually it's saying to you, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. You need to do something. You need to do something differently. But what we often do is we ignore them or we bury them or we think, oh, it'll be okay. And we don't listen to the lesson that it offers. And that's when we get into trouble. Yes, and you know, it's incredible that you're saying these things because I've been reading about different things about personalities and emotions and feelings. And, and I've been researching because of what happened in my life throughout the years. And I discovered that, that 
we have what they call emotional, or uh, how should I say this? We have emotionally impulsive reactions, and we have emotionally repressive. And one uh, is impulsive, that's me, <laughs> or used to be me, not anymore. I'm laughing. It's not funny when you're going through it. No, it's still. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous when I think about it. And emotionally impulsive where you go with your feelings and you let your feelings take the action because you're out of control. Do you know why that happens? Oh, well, yes. It happens from childhood. It happens well, to me. It, that's the, that's the uh, underpinning reason why um, you've been triggered by that situation. Yes, so, I'm triggered. Exactly. You're right. However, when we are very reactive to things, it's because we are not thinking consciously. Yes. Our unconscious mind is triggered and reacts before our conscious mind has a chance to say, hold on a minute, actually, that's not the best reaction. Or I'm reacting not to that situation, but it's triggering an old situation. Yes. I'm reacting disproportionately to this one. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. See, I'm still studying it. <laughs> but well, you're so uh, right. But it, and it is because it's a trigger. And, and if the other person triggers you, your brain says, uh oh, this is what you went through. Your daddy is yelling at you. He's going to hurt you. He's going to beat you. And so you react to that impulsively, and your feelings take control, and you are out of control. And then there's the emotionally repressive person who is logical. And that's not good either because he or she keep it inside and they suppress it and they don't talk about it and they don't deal with it. And they're dealing with the same thing. It's something from their past. So they're dealing with the same repressiveness from their past and their brain is saying, don't respond, don't respond, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, you, you know, just keep silent, hold it back, and you hold it back, and it makes you sick. And the interesting thing is that people can have both issues. Yes. And can flip from one to the other. Yes, and they're both bad. It's well, they're, let's put it this way, they're not the best way of dealing with things they're because they yeah. create yeah. other problems. So if you bury your emotions, I liken it to a dragon in a box. Yeah. You know, you push your emotions down. I had to take my cat to the vet today, this week and yeah. I put him in the cat box and suddenly he becomes an octopus with eight legs. And you're trying to get him in the box and it's really, really difficult. And your emotions are a little like that because if you buried them, they, they get more and more powerful. And then as soon as you open the box, so they pop out and then it's very hard to get them back in. Yes. And I think, I think that I, I think I was very emotionally impulsive. I think I also became emotionally repressive because I didn't want to create any problems. So I kept everything inside. And then there came a point where the lid popped off and I blew up like a steamer and it's a really common pattern yes. and as i say you can be both repressed and yes. um you know hold things down or be very reactive when in reality if you are able to sit with your emotions and ask yourself what is it trying to tell me what's this emotion about yes. and deal with that in a way that's proactive and consciously thinking about it then you're in the best possible place to deal with it. Because yeah. in reality, there is no bad emotion. It's what you do with your emotions that make it difficult or easy. You're so good. You're so good. Well, I've <laughs> had quite a lot of practice. Remember, I've been in this game over 30 years. So oh, just, I've worked with just a few people. <laughs> you're excellent. I love it. Well, I'm learning all this now. And and i have been praying for the last eight months i have been studying and i've been praying and i've been asking god to take it away from me to change me to help me fix it 
I've been reading articles, I've been watching YouTube, I listen to you, you know, and I'm telling you, I, I'm a different person. I'm the same person in a lot of ways, but I'm a different person because now I don't jump and get impulsive. Now I relax, calm down, walk away, walk outside, think about it, and then analyze it, and then come up with something really good and talk about it like two adults and solve it and finish with it and it's done. Or you just don't bring it up, you know, it depends on the situation. But it's so much more powerful when you do that because the problem with being reactive yeah. is the chances are you're talking to somebody else who is also triggered. Yeah. So you're triggered, you go, ah. They're triggered, they go, ah. Before you know where you are, you're in each other's throats. Yeah, I went through that. That's exactly yeah. what happened. <laughs> and yes, and you say things and you do things you really don't want to and you don't mean it. And you don't realize it until weeks later. The trouble is, once the genie's out of the box, out of the bottle, and you actually say those words, yeah. you can't take them back. No. One of the things that I'd like, perhaps your listeners would find this useful to think about, is that every word we speak, yeah. every action we take or not, how we do it, when we do it, leaves a living legacy. Because it impacts not only on you, but also on the people around you. Yeah. And so when you're thinking about how am I going to react, think about the legacy that you want to leave, not just yeah. in that moment, but days, weeks, months from there. Yes. And when you said that, uh, you know, you can't take them back. That's true. However, we can learn. You can oh. go and ask for forgiveness. Yes. And you can let that person know that you didn't mean what you said. You can make that person understand where you were coming from and why you came to, and why you said what you said and did what you said and ask forgiveness and that and let them know how much you've changed and, and what you've done to change yourself, to improve yourself, to change the behavior. It's not the individual's problem it's not the individual that's bad it's the behavior that's bad absolutely and what i would say to you that's very true and and actually saying to somebody else that you know i i realize that now i've calmed down that that was not the best way to yeah. deal with the situation yeah. but there is a caveat there is a however and it's great to do what you suggest and it really works yes but only if you learn the lesson and the next time there's a problem you don't go back to the old behaviors exactly. because you can't keep being forgiven for the same thing over and over again exactly you have to truly truly be changed truly Absolutely. truly change your behavior so that if it does if you do get triggered again you handle it the way the new way you That's don't right. go back to the old way because yeah. then you have the same problems, the same responses, the same reactions, the same everything. So then you really you didn't get anywhere with life. And there are people who will, uh, I, I've worked with a number of people who've been abused, for example, and we've talked about this outside the show. Um, and the, the abuser will come back and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Yeah. And that's true until the next time. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that until the next time. And I think for the person on the receiving end, you know, giving somebody a chance is, is great. But if they are making those same hurtful remarks, those same, that same belittling, or it's physical, you, you know, if you're consistently um, allowing that to continue, yes. you have to ask yourself the question why. And the same triggers. If they're Absolutely. using the same triggers, yes. And you, you've changed your behavior, but they haven't changed their behavior. No. And then it's time to make a decision whether you're prepared to put up with it. And one of the problems is very often that, that we, in accepting poor behavior, it's almost that you've condoned it. So it's important that you confront the behavior, but that you're not aggressive or confrontational. So what so would you do? Let's say that you 
let's say that you go to that person that gave you the trigger and you were the impulsive, emotionally reactive yeah. person. Let's say, let's use me for example. And, and, and I've learned, I've changed my behavior. I asked God to fix me. I prayed, I, I've been studying, I've been reading, I've been listening to you, taking your advice, getting psychological therapy and just doing whatever is necessary to improve me and mm -hmm. to be a better person and to hold myself with value and respect, which I do. I've always felt value and respect for myself. And now more so because I've learned so much about me that I didn't know and that I've changed in my behavior. And so let's say that I went to the person and I said, I want you to know this is what happened. This is why I did it. This is why I said it, blah, blah, blah. And when you triggered me, yada, 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 you know, and this is the way I should have handled it. Now, if the other person takes responsibility for their part and talks about their behavior and, and the time that they were gone and how they feel, then you know that there's been a change of behavior there too. And that maybe the triggers are not gonna be the same. Maybe there is hope for you as a couple to try again and do things differently. However, if that person doesn't say anything about themselves or ask you forgiveness or how they've changed their behavior, then you have to be careful because that means they didn't change. <laughs> They're still the same person and, and they did not acknowledge their responsibility in the whole matter. I've worked with a lot of couples in all sorts of different stages within their relationship. And what I've found is if both parties, if both um, people, Yes. Are prepared to give a hundred percent and it has to be a hundred percent to the relationship and making it work. If they take radical responsibility for their own performance in this or uh, contribution and that they do the work on themselves, then that, that uh, relationship can thrive and do incredibly well. Yes. Yeah. However, if one person is ready to do the work, and the other person isn't, it's going nowhere. nowhere. It doesn't matter how much the first person wants it to happen. A relationship is a two-way process. And for me, it's about being interdependent. Yes. It's not about that person making you whole. It's not about that person's responsibility to make you happy. No. It's, your one, it's my responsibility to make me happy, and it's your responsibility to make you happy. Yes. But if you have a relationship where both of you encourage the other to be the best they can be, and it's truly interdependent, then real magic happens. Absolutely. I so agree. I so agree. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> wow. So you are incredible. Let's tell the audience how they can connect with you, how they can reach out to you and get therapy or get leadership uh, for life guidance, uh, anything, because really you do a lot. You are so talented and so educated that really we need your advice. So let's do it. I'm absolutely passionate about helping people to step into their power. And for me, genuine power means that it's not about having dominion. It's not about making somebody else less powerful. When you step into your power, you help people around you notice the potential and you help them too. So my work is um, around helping people at a personal level in terms of developing confidence and the capacity to be the best they can be. But I also work in the business context in terms of profitable, enlightened leadership. So I have two websites and between the two websites that you can see all that I do, there's genuinely hyphen you, and you can see the word genuinely, a little dash and then the word you.com and there's everything on there. But if you're a business owner or you're in corporate world and you want to be a profitable enlightened leader in this new era of consciousness, then go to enlightenedleadership.co. They can email me at Gina, at genuinely you.com and I'd love to hear from your viewers and know what they think and they can ask me questions and find out more. 
I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Gina. You are amazing. I love you. Oh, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.